Greetings, young and old. It's Ed Bud here, and I'm back with a half marathon training update for you and some information about the mini taper that I'm undertaking this week before the Blackmore Vale half marathon. If you haven't been here before, my name's Ed Bud. I'm a non elite runner from the southwest of the UK. You know the UK, that place where they eat battered Mars bars and drink tea all day. Regular viewers will now have been preparing for a half marathon or two. There's another one coming up in about eight weeks. But I'm preparing for the Blackmore Vale half marathon, which is at the very end of this current week. So this is the very last week of full training, with the race being on February the 2nd. So over the past couple of weeks, I have been opting to run commute back from my work. Um, it's about a three mile loop I've worked out. I say a loop, it's kind of a three mile kind of out the way, kind of dog leg really which gives me about three miles. I can undertake it at a nice, easy pace while carrying lots of junk on my back. I've been keeping those paces for that run round about eight minutes to eight minutes 30 per mile. So between about five minutes and five minutes 17 per kilometer. Always seems to be raining or kind of unpleasant, slightly inclement out there whenever I do this run commute back. Uh, fortunately today, it was actually relatively dry. I did utilize the Pegasus Shield today, the Pegasus 36 Shield. Um, I got those a little while ago, haven't been able to put as many miles as I'd like in them, but I'm really enjoying them right now for the slightly colder conditions. Excuse the state of this one, but it's kind of covered in leaves, mud and twigs and all sorts of other stuff that I've picked up from the ground. I'm enjoying the wet traction on these, working out really well for me. They tend to dry out quite quickly as well, which is something that's a really useful thing to have, a useful trait for a running shoe. I've been really cautious to keep these easy runs easy, even easier than I used to really, so making sure I'm keeping the heart rate nice and low. I think today it was around about 135 average, certainly keeping within those sort of zone one, zone two kind of levels of effort. The Ultra Boost 20 was my mainstay really for those sort of three mile easy runs. But I've got to admit on the left shoe recently, I've been getting some real pain around about this sort of area of the cage. It just seems to be kind of pressing down on something somewhere. Um, I only get it with that shoe and it's really been causing me a bit of discomfort. I guess it's not really pain. It's not sort of making me stop running, but it's making me not enjoy the run as much as I should. And that's just unacceptable. It's certainly to do with that kind of cage across the midfoot here, right at the very end. Almost feels like it's just sort of a little too long. I guess I could experiment maybe chopping a piece of it off or something, but when you start having to take quite drastic actions with running shoes, you know that there's something amiss. I certainly have been really enjoying actually running in these, those sort of easier efforts. It's quite nice having the huge amount of cushion there. I'm not worried about pace. It's just getting some miles in and on the books. So it's kind of a bit sad and unfortunate, really. I may try again a few times, but I think probably when I hit 50 miles in these will be when I give you my full review. As you know, recently I've been kind of doubling up on my efforts. Well, certainly last week, four miles in the morning and then some harder paced efforts later on in the day. That was very much to test out the Next Percent Ekaden and the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. And there's quite an extensive video on that. I think probably quite a lot of you have already watched. If you haven't seen it though, please stick around to the end of the video and I'll place it up onto the screen in one of the cards so you can check it out. Again, in the morning I kept those easy miles easy, uh, around about eight minutes per mile pace. Just kind of wake up really. And I missed a couple of days of training last week, mainly due to work. It's been really busy, really taxing, somewhat stressful. So getting some miles in early, it's been quite enjoyable in the mornings. Saturday just gone, it was time to hit a park run again. I haven't been to one for about three weeks or so. And you know, it just seems such a shame when it's so close by. I can literally run down to that park run. It takes me seven, eight minutes and I'm there. I feel almost obliged to attend because it's so close. Probably heading out, meeting some old buddies for a drink or two wasn't perhaps the best preparation for a park run, personal best attempt, but I had to go anyway. So a one mile warm up, just nice gentle pace really, getting the legs moving and getting ready to roll. And crazy enough, I managed to get a personal best without really trying too hard on that park run. Uh, my Strava, or at least my watch, recorded it as 20 minutes, 25 seconds which you know is a good almost 30 seconds off of my PR for the 5K distance. I'm not really sure how on earth 
they calculate the times at this part run because I started my watch early, so just before the um, actual whistle went, I can't remember what they use, not a whistle, they just kind of say go or something and everyone starts running and there's a stampede of people for about 200 metres. If you do do the oval Montequip Park Run, be very, very careful. Uh, certainly the one that's in the oval itself, it's extremely narrow at the start. Do make sure you position yourself correctly in the kind of pack somewhere so that you don't get crushed by some of the people that are going to run a lot faster than you. I certainly stopped the watch dead as I went through the finish, but I think the time up on the Park Run website is about 20.34, so it's about nine seconds, but I don't know how this stuff works. Works out about an average of six minutes 31 per mile. I think the heart rate average was about 174 beats a minute, so I was certainly up in that threshold area. And cadence 178, so I was pretty much pushing myself to where I can go at this current time. I used the Gyakuso Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. That's a lot of words there. This is a truly beautiful shoe. I think this is probably one of the most beautiful shoes I own. I remember when I first saw it, I had to have it. It was like one of those moments. I just love the colours, everything about it. It's just a... kind of reminds me of like a, a red wine, you know, maybe a vintage wine. And I love the swoosh, I love the heel counter and the gold. I did fiddle around with the lacing and the upper just after the warm-up actually, when I got down there it just felt a little loose. I didn't remember it feeling like that, especially with some of the thicker stance socks that I was wearing. A mystery. Yeah, I needed like Dick Van Dyke or Quincy or someone to come along and help solve that mystery and kind of freak me out. It's like, what, what's happening with this shoe? This shoe was a perfect fit and now it's not. What's going on? But once I got it locked in a bit more, I managed to hit some good paces over the course of that run. Pace was nice and solid, about 6 minutes 32 for the first mile, 6.30 and then 6.27 for the second and third miles. I managed to speed up a little more to 6 minutes 15 per mile for the short kind of end section. The Bozinski really put the hammer down, you know, burned some dust there. Got to be honest, really happy with that result, certainly pretty tired actually. I was just going just to have some fun. There's two double backs on that course as well. You kind of reach the kind of end of the path and there's a really kind of tight double back. And then you go all the way back down to the very end of the path again and double back before you head along a straight and then up a small hill to the finish. So you always kind of lose a little bit of pace on those double backs. It can kind of finish people off actually. I do remember the last time I did this course, um, that double back really kind of finished me off. I just couldn't get going again after that. And my good buddy, Mr. James Legg, just flew past me. Not this time, though. I saw him coming this way um, with pace. So I thought, right, let's really put the hammer down now and make sure Leggy doesn't catch me up. Love you, James. Oh, I could look at this shoe all day. It's a real beauty. Even the black section here, the yellow trim, it's everything about it's top notch. So last activity on this half marathon training update is a 10 mile run on the Sunday, so literally yesterday. It was going to be a much longer run than that, but after that part run and a pretty tiring and taxing musical performance the night before, 10 miles was just about all I could manage. Weather was really poor, lots of wind, lots and lots of rain, so I opted for the Pegasus 36 Shield. Had a bit of a lacing adjustment early on with this one. I found you kind of need to get the lacing just right where the tongue's kind of stitched into the shoe or into the sides of the shoe itself. You have to tinker a little bit sometimes with the lacing uh, to get it just right. Once I had done that though, the shoe performed very, very well in some quite nasty conditions really. I had a vest plus my Nike Shield Flash jacket and I was still getting very, very wet. Kept on rolling on at about eight minutes, five seconds per mile pace. I think time is a little over an hour and 22 minutes. So it works out just about over five minutes per kilometer. So that's certainly the last longer effort of this training block now. I've got a few days now to do a tiny bit of speed work and just rest up, bring the mileage down a little bit. So I'm nice and fresh, ready for the Blackmore Vale. Certainly getting towards 100 miles now in the Pegasus 36 Shield, so do expect a full review from me very, very soon. 
We're enjoying the front of that shoe, where it's kind of made of that neoprene type material. It seems to really vent out water quite quickly. The kind of edges around the toe box are water repellent, uh, but certainly just wearing standard socks um, through wet conditions in that shoe really works well. There's a lot of standing water yesterday. I hit some light trail areas and also a bit of grass as well, and traction was superb. Enjoying that one on a variety of surfaces. It's a great shoe. I don't think I'd want to wear it in the summer, but who would? It's not really aimed at that. It's aimed at this colder sort of weather, and it's certainly quite an inviting shoe to put on your feet. I am finding though that the wet traction outsole on the 36 Shield is a little tougher. It's a little firmer perhaps than the Pegasus 36. I think what I might do is try to do a A-B test um, when there's some wet weather coming up soon, see which one is best suited for maybe just some light rain and see what point perhaps where you'd want to switch over to this one. I do want to do an A-B test though to make sure that it's just not my mind playing tricks on me about the fact I think this one's firmer. I've been running in a lot of very cushioned shoes recently, so it could just be my memory playing tricks with me. So, bringing back the miles this week for the taper, it's going to be 8 times 400 meter repeats tomorrow at roughly my 5k pace. So just inserting a little bit of speed in there. Relatively steady 4 miles or 4 or 5 miles perhaps on the Wednesday at roughly 7 minutes 30 per mile. Very easy pace miles on the Thursday and doing a few strides there just to again inject a little bit of pace but keeping things nice and easy. Resting up Friday, Saturday, three easy miles and then it's race time. Right, that's about all for me for today guys. If you've got any comments or questions on the shoes or any of the training I've been doing, I'd love to see them. I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. I try to get there if I can. Uh, it's been quite busy of recent time, but I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. If you haven't already, it would mean a lot to me if you consider subscribing to the channel just down here. Please give the video a thumbs up like and make sure you share it with your friends. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.